Well, welcome back to the Beach House Grill here in Old Town, Fort Collins. We're midway through the Coors Light CSU Basketball Coaches Show. Time to talk some men's basketball with head coach Tim Miles. Buda Valley Health System is proud to be the exclusive health care sponsor of Ram Athletics and proud to state that when you need medical care, they're here for you for more information. Visit pbhs.org. Tim Miles joining us. Colorado State coming off a uh, tough overtime loss at Colorado on Wednesday, and then they took uh, the fourth-ranked team in the nation on, on Saturday in Kansas City, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, Jayhawks. I thought fared pretty well for, well, we'll call it 30 minutes, and down the stretch, Kansas uh, it was, uh, was able to pull away. We'll go ahead and say that. Tim, how are you? Good to see you. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, I'm surviving. I survived the week. <laughs> survived the week. I know. I, I, I love to meet under uh, more joyous circumstances here, and I, I know the women lost a couple of games. You guys did too, but uh, all in all, your overall thoughts from the past two games when you look back? Well, I, you know, it's hard to get get past being four and three you know I'm just disappointed about that that's uh I think we're better than that and uh and I really like our team I think we've got a chance to be pretty good yet you know uh it wouldn't have been hard to be five and two and still be a really good team but but you know we let a couple opportunities slip away we we did fail to compete against Sam Houston and uh and then you know the Colorado game was obviously uh uh, you know, when I went and rewatched it the third or fourth time, uh, you know, kind of took the emotion out of it. It was really kind of a fun game to watch from a spectator standpoint. Now, I'm not light on losing, obviously. It makes me ill, and I was sick for, you know, until I absolutely couldn't be sick any longer and had to get ready for Kansas. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, I thought, you know, there was, what, 14 or 16 lead changes and about eight or nine ties. And, uh, uh, and if I'm not even close to that, just make it up for me. But uh, it, it was pretty really close. a good game. Yeah, it was really a good game. It was just just disappointing we didn't do enough to win. We did a lot of right things, but not enough to win. Yeah, I, I really thought it was an entertaining game, too. And again, take the outcome out of the equation. You, you had the two biggest schools in the state going at one another in Boulder. There was a crowd of nearly 8,000 people there. The two teams traded blows the entire second half. It was on TV. I mean, there, there was a lot of things that Fans of college basketball in the state of Colorado should have liked about that game. Yeah, it game. wasn't a poorly played game. It was fairly well yep. played, and, and uh, it was just disappointing to lose. We did, like I said, we did a lot of right things, but like I told our guys afterwards, you know, we just played good enough to lose, and that's not what we're here for. We want to find a way to win those important games. You know, I was going through the Mountain West Conference scoreboard on Saturday during the post game of the um, Kansas game, and w was looking at that New Mexico New Mexico State series. They had played the Saturday before in Las Cruces. They, they, they played this past Saturday in, in Albuquerque. And I know fans have talked about it before. The, sure. doing, doing the home and home with Colorado, is that something you're, you're for? Well, I'm like Switzerland on that one. I, I really uh, have no uh, I'm, not raising, I'm not raising any ripples on anything. I'll do it if they want me to. I'm, I'm uh, not against it. I'm not really for it. And, uh, and so um, I'd prefer to go skiing maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's something that I understand and it would be fun to compete against those guys. I think it, it would drive more home revenue so you'd yeah. have a good home game game every year, I, I, uh, bigger home crowd, something to kind of rally around for a home game. I like that. Um, and, uh, and I think it's two fairly even teams, you know. Uh, they have two wonderful guards. Uh, and, uh, and, and after, you know, really, those guys I thought were really good. And after that, you know, I kind of like our guys. And, and, uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, I thought it was a fairly even game. All right, we'll talk more about this week. When we come back, we have Tim Miles leading us up to 7 o'clock. Don't go anywhere. From Nelligan Sports, the Colorado State Sports Network. Back here at the Beach House Grill on a Monday night, we talk Colorado State hoops here at the Colorado State Sports Network. Brian Roth along with the coach Tim Miles. It's the Coors Light CS. SU Basketball Coaches Show. I don't have a Coors Light in front of me. They told me I'm not allowed to have a Coors Light when I'm on the air. Yeah, so I can you believe that? Too, but you know what? Bryce Copperwood's here from High Country Beverage and his lovely wife, A-Rod, who's an Aurora girl, by the way. Hey, and uh, I'm, an, I'm an Aurora guy. Are you really? Aurora? Hey, Are you an Aurora? Oh, there's the Coors right there. Don't tease me. But uh, <laughs> Bryce is here, and I see he's got a Coors Light right next to him. I may go steal that from him later. But, uh, uh, no, it's a, it, we really appreciate High Country's uh, sponsorship of our program, and it's pretty neat having it here at the Beach House. Yep, absolutely. Colorado State uh, loses in overtime uh, to Colorado on Wednesday night, 90-83. to 83. We, we talked about it in the post game that, that first half. There, there were some numbers that went your way, but there a lot of numbers that I know you thought should have been more in your favor, hence the score. You felt like you should have been up by eight 
going into halftime. Yeah, we, we had some timely missed free throws by, you know, guys that aren't used to missing free throws. And, and uh, Jesse Carr stepped up, missed a front end of a bonus with four seconds left. Uh, he makes both free throws, which, you know, is possible. It's an eight-point lead. They're taking the ball out of, out, of the, out of bounds, going the length of the floor. Instead, we miss it. They get it out quick and hit about a 27-footer, 25-footer, somewhere in there for a, a three. Now it's a three-point lead where it could have been eight. I, I thought that was a big, you know, they talk, there's hidden plays throughout every game. Uh, football coaches, Bill Parcells, I was talking about hidden yards, like the difference between um, catching a punt that's way out in front of you and not letting it hit the ground and bounce for an extra 15 or 20 yards. And there's all these different things and different penalties you can have. And, and that's one of those hidden plays that where we miss, uh, they run it down, score, and then they get first possession, second half. And uh, it was just one of those things that was, uh, it was tough. And then down at the end of regulation, Jess missed another one, would have tied the game with 30 seconds left. Now, instead of going down and playing defense, um, uh, w with a tie game on the last possession, uh, we have to foul and start that whole rigmarole, and then we miss the layup on the next possession. So, you know, make your, make your free throws, make your layups is always a good adage for any coach and any team, and yeah. we, that would have done us well. Despite the fact that you guys only had a three-point lead instead of an eight-point lead, did, did, you feel come, did you feel good coming back out on the court in that second half? There's a there's a trend that I don't like that this team has that I, we got to figure out in a hurry on how to stop, which is three of our last four games, the defense when it's been in front of us. Uh, now I didn't look at Kansas, so I can't include Kansas as prior to Kansas after Colorado. Uh, I think three teams shot 34 percent, 34 percent, 36 percent in the first half, and then in the second half. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was 36, 34, and 44. In the second half, it was 56 from 44 to 56, from 34 to 70, and then CU went from 36 to 65. And, and just those shooting that, just the volume of makes teams are getting on us in the second half. As coaches, you know, maybe we're, we're babysitting them too much through the game plan in the first half, talking them through it when they're right there in front of us. Um, I don't know. Uh, but we, we've really got to get to be a better defensive uh, team uh, round and round. There's no question. I thought we were better against Kansas, actually. We held Kansas to lows and uh, what would you say, points, field goal percentage, and I think in a high in turnovers. So that, those are all good marks, even though we didn't compete the way I wanted to. Yeah. How about Travis Franklin from the free throw line? Can, can, can you what put your he, finger on that? He, I mean, wor he worked at it. He worked, Jan Carpenter came in and gave him some tips, uh, and, uh, and that was really nice of her. And, you know, when she has her long fingernails and the ball comes off, it kind of gets a little crazy. But, uh, uh, but uh, Travis went to work on it and just did a really good job of uh, gaining confidence. He's really done a nice job for us and but it, it's a daily exercise for him too yeah travis goes five for five against colorado and I, I i thought he was very very good in the game andy ogaday continues to to play well it's it's something that you just kind of come to expect uh, when the ball goes in the air but wes eichmeyer finally gets off the snide for you on wednesday night started to get his stroke back it looked like yeah i thought west did some really good things and uh you know i we, you know I, I really thought offensive we were okay we had some untimely turnovers and and i thought uh west had a post feed turnover and a, an inbound play and adam nigon had a post feed that were all late in the game all in either an overtime or 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 late in the game and, and those really um hurt us you know some of the turnovers we had earlier were just worked up they're all foot faults violations by just trying to go too fast and being all worked up and, and that was disappointing too but at the same time the ones i really felt like is once the flow of the game was in order we had some just kind of uh brain blurbs and uh, that was no good you guys were down two with um down 76 74 with about five six seconds to go uh you get the ball back i had a couple of ram fans come up and ask me did coach miles think about going for three at the end of regulation i thought they were really taking the three away from you guys the final minute yeah. jesse had an open lane but but it wasn't talked about at all, maybe no, going. You no, know, it wasn't. It wasn't. Okay. We went for the tie. We, it was like we almost knew we were going to get two points. We just felt like we could space them out enough, and, and we had been in the lane all night that we were going to get the two points, and, and we just felt like we had momentum too. And, yep. and when you feel like you have momentum those last few minutes of the game or whatever, that would carry over into, um, uh, into uh, overtime. So the Rams fall in Boulder, but they couldn't hang their head as they were traveling on the road to take on fourth-ranked Kansas. We'll talk about the game against Kansas, game that was at the Sprint Center in Kansas City. We'll do that next. Here's the Coors Light CSU Basketball Coaches Show from Nelligan Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Back here at the Beach House Grill in Old Town, Fort Collins, Coors Light CSU Basketball Coaches Show, talking men's hoops with head coach Tim Miles. Stay where the CSU Rams stay and score big on exceptional accommodations. 
accommodations at the Fort Collins Marriott, Fort Collins Courtyard, and Fort Collins Residence End. Be sure to ask for the CSU fan rate. Colorado State went on the road to take on Kansas at the Sprint Center on Saturday. What were some of your thoughts going into that contest? It's a KU team that was 8-0, and ranked fourth in the nation, and obviously you knew that was going to be a big test. Yeah, they're 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 good, and there's a reason they're ranked that high. They're they're a quality school, and and that's without one of their uh, top players, uh, Josh Selby, who's coming eligible now this week. Uh, they're they're a legitimate team, and and Coach Self is just I think trying to drive they're trying to drive them to a different level too. They don't always probably play at a high uh, rate of energy that he's wanted them to, uh, but at the same time I thought they they did a, a lot of things right against us, and and. Um, and, you know, we got to a point where uh, they got on us early, we kind of hung our heads a little bit, and then, and then we got a group out there that was highly competitive, and we got it down to five right before halftime. They make a really tough shot to uh, start the second half. We get it down to five, and then a chance to get to three, and we have an offensive goaltending call, which is a tough, tough call, judgment call. Um, uh, right, wrong, or otherwise, and, and that would put it to three. And, and after that, we just didn't get – we weren't able to sustain that because we weren't able to keep them off the glass. Yeah, that offensive uh, goaltending call came with about – 16 minutes to go in the game. You were down 44-39, and Mazogade who came flying in and threw it down with two hands. And not only does that get waved off, and it's not a one-possession game, but I thought it took a little momentum away from you because your bench was up and jumping around yeah, after that. Yeah, you know what happened was, and then they call him for a ticky-tack foul on a post-up, and it's his third foul right yep. away. So I want to, you know, you don't want him to get the fourth because then you know they're going to attack him. So I take him out, and then when I put him back in, he just wasn't quite the same then he got his fourth soon after that anyway and so kind of essentially that was it for Andy really and he's a big part we don't need to play Kansas without Andy for 16 minutes and and um, you know when I looked at it the, I guess the two things I was most I, I thought we you know game plan wise we knew we were going to give up some threes um, we were going to take the lane away try and take away their high low game which is a staple in what they do and and I thought we did all right with that you know like uh, when you and I talked about off the air we held them to a season low in field goal percentage we held them to uh, a season high in turnovers and a season low in points. So we controlled tempo, you know, we we made it fairly difficult. And then when you look at their percentage, they shot 46%. They had been shooting 56%. They had five run-out layups, you know, and that's a horrific night. Usually a really bad night is a couple, two or three. You know, they get five of those. That's 10 points there. And let's say we cut that and only allow two of those, you know, m minimize six points. They got another eight to 10 points on free throw blackout. Yeah. which is their length athleticism, you know. We just didn't do a great job in free throw blockout. You know, that's 18 points right there unaccounted for that's not in a half-court defense, not in anything. And, and um, right, if you do the math, you know, when it's a half-court game, we're right there with Kansas. But we just didn't allow, we didn't do enough of those small special areas for ourselves, which are catastrophic turnovers into offense. They can't have offense off our offense, right? And they did. And then that free throw game blockout, which is, um, we've seen some tough ones, and theirs was pretty good. Kansas was pretty physical. Obviously, you look at the rebounding disparity. You've mentioned that 50 to 30. Was it? Was well, it? We missed a lot of shots for them, so we were going to get out rebounded. I mean, you know, in a big way. It was those offensive ones that I thought killed us. Yeah, but they are big. They they do have some athletes. Did you feel like you you competed on the boards though? Well, and yeah. I mean, look at the points in the paint. We're 26 to 18. That's not bad you know I mean that's we hung around them you know but if you look at the second chance points that's where you know we didn't yeah. do anything when we got uh, anything uh, on a second chance they did they made us pay seven plus 17 in that area um, even points off turnovers they only had 12 we had 10 so we had our chance and we even missed two layups you know we had the yeah. one um, where uh, uh, Frank Travis Franklin went in there and just missed a layup basically it was kind of contested the next possession and then Nigon missed Nigon it too got yeah. the offensive board and missed yeah. it and uh, and then the next possession, Dorian gets murdered. I mean, he gets an arm right in front of John Higgins, the official, right in front of Higgins, grabs his arm, uh, and then the next guy just drills him, right, and no call. And uh, that was, you know, you go through a lot of games, those guys have a lot of opportunities, but, you know, we, we even had some opportunities that first half to be closer than five yeah, or seven. After that Dorian non-foul, non-call, both teams were on the other end of the floor, and the guy is still laying on top of Dorian along the baseline yeah. Yeah. Un underneath your guys' basket. But physically, will you see a team like Kansas again this year? No. No, San Diego State's not that big. 
They're not. No, we won't. I mean, we got to get our butts to the NCAA tournament. That's where we'll see them. You know, that's what we got to do. That's right. O overall, I, again, you're four and three. And I understand you go to the Sprint Center. You 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 go in there expecting to to knock off Kansas, but. Coming away from that game, uh, do you do you feel all right? I felt better about our half-court defense than I have. I felt like, okay, we had those guys on it. We knew what we were going to give up, and they hurt us some with that. And, and there's some, you know, whereas I felt like we had maybe getting ourselves too spread out in our defense. Some guys, we were getting driven on. We were also giving up threes because we were getting driven on, and we weren't doing a good enough job defending the paint. I thought we did a pretty decent job defending the paint on Kansas. And um, if you look at their paint points, they're going to get a lot of paint points on a lot of people. You look at how many we got on Colorado. We got 46 on Colorado, right? And we gave up um, 32. 32 to them. And I know that's an overtime game, but only giving up 26 to Kansas in the paint. And we, you know, we need to do a better job of taking away that paint area on teams. And um, and I thought that was at least a step forward in our defense against a, a pretty good team. Well, I got to say, I, I I still think you have the potential to be a very good basketball team this year and yeah. a few of my friends asked me about how you played against Kansas and I said I came away from that game and I'm not a coach in my opinion it doesn't matter worth anything but I felt good about your ball club coming off that game because I really do feel like you guys can compete with anybody in the Mountain West Conference even on the road after what it, I saw. It, I think it would have been another thing if, if Colorado would have you know controlled the game and beat us yeah. you know and we ended up losing by seven eight or nine but you feel like you weren't I mean it was a heck of a game yeah. and, and it didn't go our way and we didn't do enough to win um, and, and it's not like Kansas just ran away from us and, and blew us out of our, our minds and and um, and so you know I don't feel great about it but but I also know that I feel the same way I, I think we can be a good team we just need to continue to get better defensively and, and one more thought and I forgot that Dorian Green I thought he had an yeah, outstanding pretty cool outstanding night he had a ton of family and friends right there behind the bench it comes out and I thought played well I mean comes I out he, hits the first three I thought he played pretty well the last five minutes of regulation against Colorado. He came out, he finally asserted himself, and Dorian's a kind of a casual, easygoing kid, and I think he's trying to find out, okay, where do I fit in? And I think, because he, he's such an easygoing kid and an easy friend of people's, he kind of feels like, oh, I'll just kind of hang out and do my deal. Well, all of a sudden you look out and the kid's averaging six or seven points, and he really, you know, uh, is not doing a lot. And, and finally he started to begin to assert himself the way we need him to. And we need one of those guards to assert themselves in a real positive way. But, you know, when they introduced him and you could hear, you know, 16,000 people cheer, you know, or whatever that number of people was there uh, that really meant it, they were happy that this local kid was back and playing and they appreciated him. I thought that was a pretty cool moment. And then he came out and stuck a three right in their eye right away. I was really happy about then. Well, that's the, that's the way you draw up the opening of that game if you're Dorian Green. All right, running a little bit behind, still a couple more segments left to come. It's the Coors Light CSU Basketball Coaches Show. We're live from the Beach House Grill. From Elegant Sports, Colorado State Sports Network. All right, a couple more segments up here in the program. Live at the Beach House Grill here in Old Town, Fort Collins, talking CSU Hoops. Frontier is your lift ticket to 50 top uh, ski resorts across the country. That's what you get when you don't read your uh, reads here before you actually read them. Frontier is your lift ticket to over 50 top ski resorts across the country. I didn't know that. I didn't either. Check out our new daily service from Denver to Steamboat. Find mountains of ski deals for your perfect winter getaway at FrontierAirlines.com. I hate it when they change up the reads on me. All right, Tim Miles is joining us. You can always ask Tim Miles a question. You can come to the Beach House Grill and join us live. Be a part of our studio audience. Or you can click on CSURams.com at Click on Ask the Coach and ask Tim Miles a question through that avenue. Well, here's an uh, email from Denny Hagel here in Fort Collins. Of course, uh, certainly know Denny. How is Brian Bartz doing? You that know, one went over my head, yeah, Tim. Yeah, well, Denny's, uh, Denny's a very smart man. Yeah, listen, he's, he's over there pretending now. Brian, I don't know what Brian is doing. He didn't come to our class reunion, so uh, uh, it's funny. You know, Brian's a kid from my hometown, and there's only now there's only 14 of us in my senior class, and and uh, 13 of us, of course, graduated, and uh, and I was number seven in that class. So uh, um, uh, Denny knows that. <laughs> he knows that. Uh, Not a rocket scientist, baby. I'm a basketball coach. Well, thank you, Denny. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, we also have another. Uh, Email from uh, Ask the Coach. It's Is this from, only going to be as fun for me? <laughs> I don't think it will be. It's from uh, Big E, Eric Sampson in Fort Collins. He's asking about, well, what do you do with all the finals going on here at CSU? You don't play until nine games from uh, yeah, nine days well, from now. And that's the hard part. We're still juggling. Um, we had uh, a thing. Uh, 
uh, today where a teacher moved a final, which kind of screwed with our practice time with different things like that. So, you know, you juggle around your practice time. We're going to give it, we, we had our guys off today. And, uh, and then we'll go off again like on Friday probably, and we'll practice throughout the week. And then, uh, and then we'll really worry about Northern Colorado on uh, Saturday, Sunday, and play Monday. Again, that comes up on December the 20th. We'll talk about the Bears of UNC when we come back. One final segment left here on the Coaches Show, brought to you by Coors Live from Elegant Sports, Colorado State Sports Network. One final segment left here on the uh, program. Ryan Roth along with Tim Miles, Beach House Grill, and Old Town Fort Collins. All right, let's quickly go to the phone lines and uh, bring in Broderick from uh, Baton Rouge. Is that right? Broderick, welcome to the program. I just want to ask, I just want to make a comment. Well, it's not really a question, it's a comment. Let Tim Miles, I just want to say that your team did good, and I just want them to be more aggressive on that court and make more smarter shot selections. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And I agree. I thought the second half was the first time all year I'd seen us kind of fragment out and not take such good shots. But hopefully Baton Rouge, hopefully we've got a Travis Franklin fan there, too, because Travis yes, sir. Been... Yes, sir. Sir, we are representing. That's right. That's right. Travis is a great. We love him. We might keep him up here now. You never know. Yeah, you can't keep him too long. You got to come back here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you can have him. All right. I'll share. But, no, Travis has been awesome for us, and uh, I'm glad that uh, Baton Rouge is, is, uh, is paying attention to the Rams. All right, Broderick. Okay, thanks, Broderick. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I always like getting Travis on the post game, and, and uh, you know, He's got talk such to a him. Great personality. He I'm does. Serious. That kid, man. We're, I'm a. I already miss him, but he is just, uh, you know, he's the one that said uh, uh, Ogaday last year, Andy, would you rather pass or be stabbed with a knife? And Andy <laughs> says, well, how big's a knife? And, I mean, that was the funniest thing. I'm sorry I'm not joking about any of that stuff, but, boy, that's Travis is a funny guy. You know, and, and we, we mentioned Travis making free throws, but, uh, again, we, we talked about his yeah, went to work. his quickness, though. Off the dribble, a 6'7", Kemi, he, he's taking Nine six seconds. more guards off the dribble. Yeah, there's not many guys that can stay in front of him, you know, and you could see Cam Kansas having to scheme it up on him a little bit, and they played him with two. Uh, they had a couple guys waiting on him the whole night. Yep. UNC coming up on December the 20th. I know it's a long ways away. I'm yeah. sure you haven't started your scout yet, but what, well, I what do you I remember getting beat there last year. That's all yeah. I need to remember. And, uh, you know, that's turned into a kind of a fun little rivalry. Uh, they've all been pretty good games. Uh, you know, I think when we beat them here, we beat them by about seven or eight two years ago. But it was a good game right down to the end last year. I think we lose by about six or seven. It was a good game right down to the end. Should be fun. Do you know anything about Coach B.J. Hill? He was on Tad Boyle's staff. I've known B.J. for a long time. Uh, he was uh, uh, an assistant coach at Indian Hills Community College and when we recruited uh, different guys he's at uh, uh, Independence Kansas and he's been Tad's assistant for a long time he does a nice job BJ's good no it should be fun looking for a little revenge aren't we yes <laughs> <laughs> that's the coach Tim Miles CSU men's basketball again the men 30. they will take on um, UNC coming up on December the 20th at 7 p.m. The women play earlier that day against South Dakota. That's a 2 p.m. at Monday afternoon tip-off time. You don't, you don't hear those very 20. often, but they have, uh, again, South Dakota coming up on the 20th. Thanks to Tim Miles, Kristen Holt, Charlie Grimes has been back at Master Tim. Control. Bob Greenfield, our on-site engineer for the staff at the Beach House Girl. I'm Brian Roth saying so long.